Gaming the Goons, we work hard, we play harder. Welcome to our series, which features a wide range of tabletop games. So today's game that we are doing is a board game called Betrayal, House on the Hill. It's a strategical game which includes a twist within it. That's right, so all players start off working together as a team, but halfway through that game, a twist will happen and one player betrays that team. And for the character wise, totally we got 12 characters. And each character got their own unique trait, including might, speed, sanity, and knowledge. And now we are doing a tutorial. Welcome to Betrayal. So you start the game with these landings. So you start off with the entrance hall, foyer and grand staircase, and the upper landing. Let's go through the basic movement. So our friend here, Ox, has a speed of four. He's going to go use his speed to move one, and then a, a second movement into this unknown room here. So you need to find a room tile that matches the landing you are on. We can place this room tile in any position we want, providing there is an adjacent door. Once you move into this room, you reveal an event card. Flash here has revealed an event card, which we must resolve before the end of his turn. Revealing the event card and we must follow the instructions. This one, something slimy. What's around your ankle? A bug? A tentacle? A dead hand chlorium. All creepy. You must attempt a speed roll. Four plus, you break free and gain one speed. One to three, you lose one might or zero. Lose one might and one speed. To resolve this, we must attempt a speed roll with these dice here. Flash has a speed of six and that's what we will be rolling. A point to note is these dice only have one or two. The other counts as zero. So I've achieved a speed roll of seven, which is way above the four plus. So Flash's speed increases to a total of seven, which allows him to roll seven die in future event or trait rolls. Now that Flash has resolved his event card, his go ends, and we move on to Professor Longfellow, who's going to use his speed and go through this door here. Using a ground floor tile, we have discovered a coal chute, which slides us to the basement landing, which you can reveal part way through a game. So one through there, straight into the basement landing. He's gonna move right, using his speed of four. And he has revealed some basement stairs, which lead back to the foyer. There is no symbol, so he's free to move again. So he can move back towards the foyer, or he can continue exploring the basement which is what he's going to do. He's revealed a larder and revealed this item symbol. Uh, there is also descriptions on some tiles which allow you to perform specific actions. For instance, this one says once per game, if you end your turn here, you gain one might. All symbol cards must be resolved before you apply the text on a tile. Professor Longfellow has now got a angel feather, a perfect feather fluttering in your hand. When you attempt a roll of any kind, you can call out a number from zero to eight. Use that number instead of rolling the dice. Discard this item after you use it. As per the game rules, all items and weapons must be available to be seen by everyone. 
we do have a little house rule where we only reveal weapon items. All other items we keep face down, unless you choose otherwise. Now that Professor Longfellow has finished his turn, we go back to Flash, who's going to move on to the next room. So taking another ground floor tile, we have an omen card. Once you see the symbol, you pick up an omen card. This one is a dog companion, which allows me to carry a number of items around with me. Every time you reveal an omen card, you must make a haunt roll. To do this, you roll six dice and you have to equal or beat the number of omen cards on the table to be successful. On a failed haunt roll, you refer to what is known as the haunt chart. You find the room you're in, in this case the dining room, and the last omen card you picked up for us is a dog. This refers to number five and reveals that I am secretly a traitor. If you're lucky enough to pick a different situation, such as the dining room with the spirit board, you refer to a different number, which in this case is the left of the haunt revealer. Other situations can arise, such as higher sanity, highest knowledge, as well as a number of other conditions. If any of the two explorers tie in the same trait, you always run with the traitor being the leftmost of the haunt revealer.